Hi, my name is Ariel Bernard Eisen, and I'm a visual artist and a singer songwriter. And um, art is to me transmutation. Hello, I'm Ariel Bernard Eisen. Welcome to my studio. This is where I come to paint and um, play music and essentially just find my little slice of peace in the chaos. So uh, I'll take you on a little tour. Um, this is what I'm currently working on. This is a Christmas cactus. The star is right here, the model. Um, and I've recently just fallen in love with cacti. Uh, earlier this year, they one, a cactus came to me in a vision and I just deeply connected to um, its resilience and how they grow in really inhospitable climates and end up thriving and finding this niche. And the flowers in particular are just, they've like captivated me um, because you know, the plant puts so much energy into this flower and, you know, with barely enough water in, in its environment and shoots out these beautiful flowers. And I mean, obviously this little pot has some help from me in Florida, but um, like in the desert, they, they shoot out these beautiful flowers, which end up being these oasis for pollinators who travel across the desert and just kind of like the ethos and the myth of the cactus is really beautiful to me. So I've been wanting to paint them and I've been starting series, um, still working on this. Uh, but I also, that one's in process. And this one, this baby's done. And I am actually gonna put them on the wall right now. So I've been drawing since I was, I think my mom said three. Uh, I used to go like that, which was give me a pencil so I can <laughs> draw. Um, and triangle people were my, my first portraits. Uh, but it wasn't until I was in high school, like a teenager, that the arts became really central for me. And um, I think I struggled with, communication um, you know I it's not that I couldn't talk to people but it was just really limiting to me and frustrating um, and especially in contrast with sort of the richness of the of my inner world and you know where I would go when I would create something um, so I, I actually was homeschooled for a lot of my high school years and took a lot of art classes and music classes and um, uh, as part of that homeschooling. And it was really, it was kind of how I connected to myself um, through drawing and painting and songwriting. They were all my three modalities. And um, when I got a little older, I, you know, I'd still, I was still involved, but just like into my early 20s, I started to feel the weight of um, the need to sort of commodify my art. And um, it really, it was, it was very heavy for me. And it made me want to put down the arts altogether for several years and um, I didn't know it but I really suffered through that um, because you know I, I kind of decided that making a living with my art was not feasible or certainly was going to be way harder than I was up for and um, so I, I spent a long time focusing on other things but trying to leave this vacant slot in my life 
for my creative process. Um, and um, yeah, it honestly wasn't till recently that I just realized mm, I, I need it. I need to be creating. It's what quiets me and connects me to something bigger. Is this watercolor? No, this is oil paint. This okay. is water-based oil paint. Okay, yeah. so now how far along? Um, I'm, I'm a couple hours into it. Okay. Probably, it's really hard to know when something's done, but um, probably a quarter to a third way complete with this. Um, I'm not sure how it's gonna evolve but I really am trying to tap into the spirit that I feel with the plant. Um, so, so yeah, that's, that's my focus and, you know, see how the shape and the colors kind of form around that. So I tend to find meaning and symbolism in plants and animals. Um, that kind of like supersedes the actual plant or animal like it's on some different level to me um and sometimes they come in dreams or kind of semi-lucid visions and uh the tiger came to me in a dream i had a dream of a tiger crawling in my bedroom window and um i just knew it was so potent i had to paint it and this actually started last year and only recently like it, it was incomplete for quite some time. And then recently I looked at it again and I just saw what it wanted to be. And, um, you know, I'm still kind of learning about like, like the symbolism in it. Like the, the tiger to me is very like pr this like primal life force and, and that it's coming through uh, a window, which is typically shut and onto this chest, which is also shut. It's this kind of like the things that are kept locked, that are kept under wraps. Secrets. Secrets or, you know, yeah, things that maybe are in the dark somewhat, um, in the unconscious. And, and this is just bursting through. It's like, nope, it's the, the things are not gonna stay locked very long. Um, and uh, also this, play with like the vibrancy of this whole world that the tiger is coming from like I wanted to give this sense that it's coming from another world and into this two-dimensional line world that doesn't have color that doesn't have three-dimensionality and I'm not quite sure if it's done yet I just keep looking at it and asking it like are you done um but uh but yeah it's definitely been a process with this. When I start an Animalia piece, I typically start with a rough rendering of my subjects in their human form. And even though it takes a little extra time and eventually disappears into the final product, I feel it's so important to capture the basic structure and beyond that the essence of the person um, because that's what will eventually shine through in the animal transformation. So here I'm I'm gradually changing his face structure, um, bringing in the bare nose and you know, obviously all the fur and all while trying to really keep my eye on the the individual, um, essence, you know, the sort of un, unnameable qualities of that person um, that I can see through their reference photo or their, you know, if they're sitting with me. Um, and yeah, it's a very odd and delicate dance between the human form and the animal form. Um, and I do use reference photos for the animals um, 
And, you know, like a squirrel's chin is in a very different place than a woman, a human woman's chin. And so it's often just this kind of back and forth thing, finding where the two can meet um, and, um, you know, sort of leave you in this somewhat curious hybrid uh, interpretation of, of the person as their animal. Um, and I just putting fine, fine tuning touches, making sure I keep my eye on the essence of the person as the transformation takes place. I think what is essentially important to me is that I keep growing and, um, and you know, the, the art making process for me is a lot like a mirror, uh, where I learn things about myself and, um, perfectionism is a sort of has been the bane of my existence for a long time, most of my life. So, um, as far as the, the actual work that I'm creating, I see letting go of some of that control and uh, bringing in more fluidity and sort of marrying this like fine attention to detail that I have, that I'm naturally inclined towards with just a looseness and uh, maybe letting the medium show me what it can do without me deciding uh, for it. So now you had mentioned con why so much control? How did it start, if I may ask? Mm. Or what you said was you like to control the whole process of it, right? Yeah. Why is that? That's a really good question. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. And this might turn into a therapy session. <laughs> but it's a really good question. Um, I mean, my first thought is that there's so much that's not controllable in the world and in my life. And... Um, and it's kind of a place where I can determine the, the outcome of what I'm making. However, I'm learning that doesn't really work for me. Like, it, that need to control the outcome, it really, um, it kind of generates fear and um, rigidity. And, and I'm starting to learn that. I'm starting to learn where that, that lives in me and just trying to shake it out, kind of use, and use painting as a way to, um, to, to loosen that control. When I'm painting, I, I feel like I'm in dialogue with something, um, whatever you want to call it, some higher, intelligence or God or something that I'm, I'm communicating with. And it's kind of this dance between my will or my desire to control the process and like the insight or the messaging or the, the guidance that I'm getting through that other source and um and so where control really doesn't work for me is uh it, it can block that like I, I feel like a lot of the good stuff actually comes not even from me like from something else through me so would would you say when you're painting there's a lot of subconsciousness that enters absolutely i think that is uh, a lot of what I use art for um, is um, to swim in those waters and pull things out that might be harder to see 
um, just going about the world in a sort of externalized way. Um, it is kind of therapy. So is, is it very similar with your music also? Yeah, I'd say it is. Like the content is different because like there's all sorts of weird content in the subconscious. Um, but, um, but yeah, a lot of times I'm like, I'm seeking, I'm seeking something and I might not be exactly sure even what I'm seeking, but it's, it's like feeling around in the dark for it. And, and I kind of know when I've stumbled on it or, um, or sometimes it is really trying to ask questions or resolve emotional tension. Um, and, and songwriting is really, really helpful for that. Well, since we're on the subject of uh, songwriting, would you want to play something that yeah. you, you created for us? Yeah, absolutely. I could do that. Um, oh, looky here. <laughs> <laughs> This is a song about resiliency and perseverance through all the hard things in life that we all gotta do. Birds fly thousands of miles every year and the joey can survive the desert heat. The octopi is adept at adapting to its habitat. Surely there's a piece of that in me. I'll be fine, I'll be fine, I'll be fine. Simply gonna take a little time. I got so far. That was beautiful. Thank you. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. I really like the word liminal, which is uh, in between two places. <laughs> um, I think it kind of shows up a lot in my life and my creations and yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. It's been a pleasure to open up my little world to you. And uh, I'll see you next time on Artists Connecting South Florida. Bye.